Uh, good evening, everyone. Let's start with a lesson, the Arctic region, chapter five on page two forty-eight for fifth standard, social studies for fifth standard, chapter five, the Arctic region, chapter five, the Arctic region on page two forty-eight. Climatic zones. Climate refers to the weather conditions of a place in general. or over a long period of time certain factors such as distance from the sea amount of moisture in the air winds height above the sea level and distance from the equator affect the climate of a place based on the distance from the equator and the amount of heat it receives the earth is divided into three climatic zones the torrid zone the temperate zone and the frigid zone today let us learn a little more about them the torrid zone also known as the tropical zone or the tropics extends from the tropic of cancer to the tropic of capricorn the equator lies in the middle of this region and divides it into the north torrid zone and the south torrid zone The North Torrid Zone lies between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer. The South Torrid Zone lies between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. It receives the vertical rays of the sun and hence remains hot. This heat helps in evaporation of water from the water bodies which results in rain. Thus The region is hot and humid throughout the year. It is home to tropical rainforests, grasslands and hot deserts. The Sahara Desert, the Thar Desert and the Atacama Desert are some of the deserts found in this zone. Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, Nairobi, Quito are some of the important cities in this zone. The temperate zone is located between the tropical and the frigid zones. There are two temperate zones, the north temperate zone and the south temperate zone. The north temperate zone lies between the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic Circle. The south temperate zone lies between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle. The sun does not shine directly over this zone. Thus, this region receives slanting rays of the sun and experiences moderate climate. It is home to many deciduous forests and temperate grasslands. Tokyo, New York, and London are some of the most populous cities found in this zone. The frigid zone also known as the polar regions is located between the poles and the temperate zones there are two frigid zones the north frigid zone and the south frigid zone the north frigid zone lies between the north pole and the arctic circle the south frigid zone lies between the south pole and the antarctic circle This zone receives very little warmth from the sun's slanting rays and hence remains cold and dry throughout the year. It is home to vegetation such as grasses, lichens and mosses. Anchorage, Reykjavik, Nuuk and Verkhoyansk are some of the cities found in this zone. The frigid zone The frigid zone also known as the polar regions surrounds the north pole and the south pole of the earth There are two frigid zones one in each hemisphere covering about 8.24% of the earth's surface The frigid zones are the coldest area on earth and are covered with ice and snow these zones always receive slanted rays of the sun 
which mostly gets reflected by the ice and snow cover on the ground. This makes these zones cold throughout the year. Today, let us study more about both the frigid zones one by one in detail. The North Frigid Zone, also known as the Arctic Zone or the Tundra region, is located between the Arctic Circle and the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere. This zone includes parts of Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland and Russia. The vegetation of the North Frigid Zone is limited to only a few species of plants such as algae, fungi, lichens and mosses. This vegetation is called tundra. This zone has both land and sea animals. The animals found in these zones have adapted to the extremely cold climate. They usually have thick coats of fur to keep them warm and survive the scarcity of food. Most of the animals depend on other animals for food. Some of them migrate to warmer areas during the winter while the others go into deep sleep or hibernation. Polar bears, reindeers, seals, hares, arctic fox and the ground squirrel are some animals that live here. This zone is home to nomadic tribes such as the Inuit of Alaska, the Sami and Laps of Scandinavia, the Chukchis, Samoyeds and Yakuts of Russia and Siberia. The people of these tribes live in small villages near the coastal regions and follow their traditional occupations of hunting, reindeer herding, fishing and fur trapping. They live with whatever little resources are available to them. However, with changing time, Mining has become an important occupation of people. Deposits of minerals such as oil, natural gas and uranium are found in this zone. Apart from this, tourism, oil extraction and trading are some of the other occupations of people here. The South Frigid Zone is located between the Antarctic Circle and the South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere. This zone comprises the continent of Antarctica and is also known as the Antarctic Zone. The Antarctica does not support any vegetation as the land is permanently covered with ice. This zone has only sea animals. Some of the animals found in this zone are Seals, penguins, albatrosses, whales, squids and the Antarctic krill. There are no permanent human settlements in this zone. However, the zone serves as a home to the scientific research stations and scientists working in them. Now the Arctic region as the name is familiar to you it will be a very cold region always covered with snow and ice and uh, hardly there will be any uh, people living there because of the very cold temperatures. So today we are going to start on this lesson and I want you to follow the textbook on page 248. Now under let us begin there are two questions which is assigned for you. You have to find the answers for the first one. Name two states or union territories in India which have very severe winters and heavy snowfall. So with your previous textual knowledge, I think you can give me the answers for A, 1, A and B. And second one, how do you think people, plants and animals survive in these cold regions? So this also could be your own answer. You can write it and then later on in the next class, I will be giving you the answers to these two questions. 
So, let's start. Can you imagine living in a place where there is snow all around you? The temperature in places like Leh, Ladakh and the Kashmir Valley is below zero degrees during the winter. So now we are approaching the winter season, that is December, November, December, January. And temperatures in uh, Leh and the Kashmir Valley and Ladakh will fall, fall below zero. That means it will go to minus, where it is very, very cold, severe cold. Not like the winter or the mild winters or mild uh, winter nights that you experience here in Kerala. It is very, very cold. You have to be uh, wearing a lot of warm clothing and boots to protect yourself from the snow and the frostbite. But in the snow covered regions of the Arctic and the Antarctic, the average temperature in winter is minus 34. So you can just imagine how cold it is. What a harsh region it must be to live in. Where are the lands of ice and snow? Now we are going to read where these areas are located in the globe. The parts of the earth that lie in the Arctic Circle in the north and the Antarctic Circle in the south are called the polar regions. So you have to get back to the globe where you have the equator in the middle and you have the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. As I told you, as you go further away, farther away from the poles, the temperatures become very, very cold. So the North Pole and the South Pole are the coldest regions on Earth. The region around the North Pole is called the Arctic region. It consists of the Arctic Ocean, Greenland, thousands of islands and the northern parts of Asia, Europe and North America. So you find a picture of the Arctic region there covered with snow. So the areas that come under the Arctic region are the Arctic Ocean, Greenland, thousands of islands, northern parts of Asia, Europe and North America. Next page please. On page 249 you can see the map a part of the world map which shows you the polar regions in North America and in Europe. Let us study about Greenland. Now Greenland, we are going to study about this country here that is in the Arctic region. Greenland is the largest island in the world. So just remember that it is the largest island in the world. Cape Morris Jessup is its northernmost point. Most of Greenland is covered by thick ice. The southwestern coast, where most of the Greenlanders live, is the warmest part of the island. So there are people living in Greenland and they are called the Greenlanders and they live in the southwestern part of the island. Land surface. Greenland lies to the northeast of Canada and is separated from it by the Baffin Bay. So Canada and Greenland is separated by a bay known as the Baffin Bay. Except for its narrow coastal strips, Greenland is covered with ice-capped mountains. So the mountains are always covered with ice in Greenland. Huge lumps of ice called icebergs float on the sea. So the water in the sea has become solidified and they form huge blocks of ice that float on the sea. Now there you can see a map of Greenland over there in the text on page 249. Now regarding the climate. Climate is very cold throughout the year. It receives very little rainfall. In summer, the sun shines brightly for all the 24 hours in most part of the island. So, it is very cold throughout the year and it gets very little rainfall. But during the summer season, there is sunlight 24 hours in the island. The Arctic region is often known as the land of the midnight sun because even at night 12 o'clock, it is sunlight. It is very bright and sun. So the Arctic region is known as the land of the midnight sun. Next page please. As mentioned before, most of Greenland is covered with ice. During spring, the ice begins to melt. Sometimes icebergs float away, causing great danger to ships. In 1912, a huge ship named the Titanic sank after hitting an iceberg. Now you must have heard of the movie The Titanic which was a world famous movie. Now that movie depicts the drowning of this beautiful uh, ship the Titanic which was uh, uh, meant for people on holiday. It was a very huge ship and on its way when it is on the sea it accidentally hit an iceberg and the impact was so hard that the ship began drowning and 
It drowned finally with almost uh, no survivors on board. So that happened in the year 1912, a very uh, long time back. But even today, the Titanic is referred to in all uh, history as one of the greatest ships for people who go on a holiday. Vegetation. You will be surprised to learn that there is a variety of plant and animal life in these icy conditions. Mosses, lichens and grasses grow here. Though it is very, very cold, you don't find many trees, but you will find different types of vegetation here like the mosses, the lichens and the grasses growing in the Arctic region. Now coming to animal life, you can see the picture of a seal, a walrus and a polar bear. Animals such as caribous, you must have learned about caribou in the science lesson when it comes to migration. Migration, it was referred to there, caribou is a migratory animal. Animals such as caribous, musk oxen, polar bears, seals, walruses, whales and lemmings live here. A special breed of dogs called the huskies is rare here to draw sledges. Now sledges are some sort of a, you know, um, boat thing, uh, not exactly like a boat, it is uh, made of wood and uh, people uh, cannot walk on the snow so they have this sledges tied to the neck of the huskies. Some two or three huskies together will pull a sledge like you know the caravan is being pulled by a uh, what do you say camel. The same way the sledges are being pulled by the huskies in this cold area that is the Arctic region. So the Huskies is a special breed of dogs that is made use to draw the sledges in the Arctic region. Now next, coming to the life of people. On page 251, the original inhabitants of this land, of this island, are called Inuit. So the Greenlanders are known as by Inuit. There are very few Inuits now. Most of them have mixed with the Europeans and are now known as Greenlanders. Like you have the tribal people here in our country and other countries, now the Greenlanders, previously known as the Inuits, now they have mixed with the European races and uh, now they are known as Greenlanders and not as Inuits anymore. Life is very hard on this island because of the harsh climate. The few Inuit who are left live in the northwest. Earlier, the Inuit people used harpoons to catch fish and seals. Now a harpoon is like a javelin, it is a long rod, iron rod with a very sharp pointed end. Now as soon as an Eskimo or the Inuit, he sees a whale or a walrus, what he does or a seal, what he does is he throws the harpoon which, uh, with, uh, you know, with a great strength and a proper uh, target that it does hit the whale or the fish or the seal in such a manner that it goes right inside through the skin of this particular animal and then it dies because of the impact and the hard um, throw and the injury this animal dies and then it is taken by the Eskimo or the Inuit for his food. They would place a branch or stick in a hole in the ice and wait for hours for seals, walruses and fish to come up for air. When the stick is moved the Inuit would quickly pierce the back of the animal with the harpoon. So this is also another method where they don't throw they wait for the prey to come by keeping a branch or a stick in a hole in the ice and they wait for this walrus or seal or whichever aquatic animal to come out for air. Once the animal comes, they throw the harpoon and injure the animal. The injury is so bad that the animal dies and then they take it for their food. Now the Inuit have adopted modern ways of hunting. So this is a very traditional old method of hunting but now the Inuits or the Eskimos they have taken to a new way of hunting these animals. They hunt seals, walruses, bears, foxes and other animals for meat. The skin of the animals is used to make tents and kayaks or boats. So there are many uses, the food is the meat, then the skin is used for making kayaks and tents and also boats. Blubber. Now there is one uh, thing called as blubber that is beneath the skin of these whales or walrus and that is used by them to, as fuel. Once the animal is killed and the skin is pulled out, the layer under the skin is known as blubber or fat and this fat is extracted and used as fuel by the Eskimos or the Inuit. 
Thus, every part of the animal is put to good use. Housing. Greenlanders live in houses made of earth or earth-packed stone in winter. These houses are heated by blubber. So the blubber that is got from the walrus or the whale is used to make the house of the Inuit warm. The houses in which the Inuit live are called igloos. You all must be knowing an igloo is like a semicircle with a small tiny opening in the front. There are no windows because they don't need, it's very cold. These houses are made of blocks of ice cemented together with snow. So the house of the Inuits or the Eskimos are just blocks of ice, you know, like a hemisphere, half hemisphere, and they are cemented with snow. Animal hides are used to cover the floor. So the floor is covered with the skin of these animals that they kill for food. Let me stop here and I want you to, as homework, I want you to draw the map given on page 249, Polar Regions. Polar Regions in the notebook and also I want you to get pictures of three animals that live in the arctic region any three animals get the picture and write the name under the picture if you cannot get the picture there's one option that i've given you you can happily draw the picture and color and write the name under the picture so options are there if you can get the picture well and good but i know it's now uh, because of this covid 19 many shops will be closed and it's difficult for you people to uh, get it so then the other option would be to draw nice labeled pictures and write the name under the picture thank you